Then I have the Bermuda's Triangle by Maureen Johnson. Uh, this is a book about these three friends, and one of them goes away over the summer, and when she gets back, her two best friends start having a relationship together. So it's it's kind of a it's, it's it looks like a really really good book. I'm really excited to read it. It was really hard for me to find though. I think it's a banned book or something. Um, anyway, uh, The Truth About Forever by Sarah Dustin. This is the only Sarah Dustin book I have, but I've heard this is really 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 good. And I really want to read one of her books, so that looks good. Then I have Thirst One by Christopher Pike, which is a bind up of three books, as you can see. And it's about vampires, so it looks interesting. Another vampire book is The Vampire Academy by Rochelle Mead. I've heard amazing things about it, but also kind of mixed things. So I'm still excited to read it, but I'll read it sometime. The Warrior Heir by Cinda Williams Chima. I think that's how you pronounce it. Uh, this is about a boy who discovers he is like the last of the warriors, I think. And basically he has to go and um, fight in this arena, maybe? I forget exactly what it's about. I'm sorry. I haven't read it yet. Uh, Sunshine by Robin McKinley. Her newest book just came out. I love this cover, by the way. And this is also about vampires. Um, and her newest book came out, it's, about, it's called Pegasus, if you want to check that out. I haven't read it yet, but it looks interesting. Then I have Gone by Michael Grant. Um, this is a dystopian novel about these kids that are the last kids on Earth because their parents, uh, all, the, all the adults just vanished, and all the kids that are under the age of 15, I think, are still on Earth alone. And then we have Poison Study by Maria V. Snyder, which is about this girl who, um, I think she commits murder, and she's on trial, and basically, instead of being executed, if you want to say that, uh, she becomes a the king's poison study, which she tests poisons in food, so the king doesn't get poisoned by assassinations. So it sounds really interesting. On my second shelf, I'll sh to just tell you what's on it first before I go into the books. My wallet, glasses, uh, three CDs. I have Journey, The Essential Journey, which I love. I love Journey. Three Days Grace, uh, this is their album one, yeah, one X, which is my favorite album. And then Skillet Comatose, which is one of my favorite albums of theirs as well. And right here I have an R.O. Stein book, uh, Cheerleader's Third Evil, and then Twitch's The Power of Two. I don't know why I have these, I think I got it at a school book fair or something, my mom, my mom made me get them or something. Um, then we have this notebook, um, and then some books right here. Uh, we have Monster Hunter International by Lori, Larry Correa. I haven't read this yet, but my friends absolutely love it. And the first sentence is so, so amazing. Uh, I just, I'll, I'll read it for you. On an otherwise normal Tuesday evening, I had the chance to live the American dream. I was able to throw my incompetent jackass of a boss from a 14-story window. Now, if that doesn't sound awesome, I don't know what does. Then I have two John Saul books, uh, The Right Hand of Evil. By John Saw, it's a uh, horror novel. And then I have uh, Suffer the Children by John Saul, another horror novel. And then I have Bone Chiller by Graham McNamee, which is about this monster that can only kill kids in the wintertime. Because it, um, it makes them feel fear and cold, and then it can eat them. So the children have to be cold in order for them to eat them. And then I have Life of Pi by Yann Martel. I've heard amazing things about it. I love this cover. It's so cool. Um, it's uh, supposed to be a really, really, really amazing book. So, looks really interesting. Uh, then I have, if I can pull it out, The Strain by Guillermo del Toro and Chuck Hogan. This is a book about vampires, and it's like, it's, it's written by the director of Pan's Labyrinth and The Orphanage. And Chuck Hogan has also written some other thriller books, so this looks really, really good. It's like an apocalyptic vampire novel, so I'm really excited to read that one. And this one my mom gave me, I'm not sure if I'm going to read it, but it's Rhett Butler's People by, uh, who is it, Donald McCaig, I think. And it, it, I don't know, I didn't really like uh, the movie Gone with the Wind. I know, it's crazy, I didn't like it. It's not a bad movie, but I didn't think it was that great of a movie anyway. But it was, I mean, I know it's a classic, and I can understand why, but... Anyway, let's just not go on into that. Um, this is basically the sequel, kind of. The unofficial sequel, I guess. Or one of them, I don't know. My mom gave it to me. Then up here I have I Heart You, You Haunt Me by Lisa Schroeder. It's also a novel written in verse. 
it's like a horror romance story, so it looks pretty interesting. It's about this girl that loves someone, and then he turns and he dies, and then comes back as a ghost. So it's pretty cool. Uh, then I have two other Alan, two Alan Hopkins books, Crank and Glass, which I love. Sorry, it's a little dark back there. Um, I love these this series. This is just amazing, and I can't wait to read the last one. Then I have Impulse, which is my favorite Alan Hopkins book. I love, 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 love this book. Everyone. Everyone should read this if you can handle the mature content because it does have a lot of mature content in it But it's just so amazing. It's just so good. Oh my god. I love it It's about these kids that t attempt to commit suicide and it's just so 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 good. I love it Then I have my Harry Potter books a couple of them up here. I have the Chamber of Secrets book two uh, book three the Prisoner of Azkaban if I can pull it out and then book five, which is my favorite book. And as you can see, book five is completely destroyed. Completely. I, I didn't really... I love this book, but I, I didn't really... I, all right, so I had it in my backpack, and I didn't really treat my backpack very well, so this book suffered for it, and I love it for it, because this proves how awesome this book is, because it withstood my abuse, and I love it. I love it so much. It's my favorite Harry Potter book. And then I have The Half-Blood Prince. Half-Blood Prince by Harry Potter. By Harry Potter. By J.K. Rowling. The sixth book. Um, and then right here I have Bloodline by Kate Carey, which is another book about vampires. It's kind of like, what if uh, this general in World War II was actually Dracula? So that's pretty cool. And then right here I have Wicked, Witch, and Curse, which is a really good book. I've I've gotten like halfway through it. I've read the first book, and it's really, really, really good. I don't think it gets enough credit that it should. Um, so far, anyway, I like it. I would give the first book four stars, but it's still really, really good. And the last book right here is the trilogy, or not the trilogy, but the first three books in the Percy Jackson and the Olympian series, um, The Lightning Thief, Sea of Monsters, and Titan's Curse, all by Rick Riordan. And it's really cool. I got this for 10 bucks, so how can I go wrong with 10 bucks? And here's the covers of all the books. And then these are my hard covers that wouldn't fit on the top shelf because um, they're too big. This is Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter by Graham, Seth Graham Smith, who is the author of Pride and Prejudice and Zombies. And I love this cover. This is one of my favorite covers because of the back. It's so awesome. Look at that. He's holding a decapitated vampire head and an axe. That's just awesome. I can't wait to read that book. Then I have The Historian by Elizabeth Kostova, which is a book about vampires. Um, I think it's about, it's about Vlad the Impaler. I haven't read it yet because it's so huge. But I love the cover. As you can see, there's a face right there. And on the back, it's just like... I don't know what the city would be in the background, but it's Transylvania? I don't know. I don't really know at all. But it's really cool. Got that for like five bucks, so I'm really happy. Uh, this is my uh, compilation book with three of Michael Crichton's novels, Congo, Spear, and Eaters of the Dead. I love Congo, but I haven't read the, thir the other two books. So if anyone else has read these two, tell me if they're any good. I know that they're movies. I think all these are movies, actually. And it's the author of Jurassic Park, if you didn't know, and I just love it. Then I have... Uh, a Lion Among Men by Gregory Maguire. I used to have Wicked and Son of a Witch, but I sold them because I tried to read them and I didn't really like it. And I didn't really want to read it, but I want to read this. It just, I don't know why. It's just because my mom gave it to me, so, yeah. Then I got Cujo by Stephen King. Uh, I love that cover. It's so creepy. Um, I haven't read this yet, but there's Stephen King way back when. Um, and... I just, I can't wait to read this. I haven't read, I haven't seen the movie either, so there we go. Then I have Dan Brown's newest book, The Lost Symbol. My dad loved this book, and I haven't been able to read it yet, but I really want to. I love Dan Brown. Uh, Wolves of Kaya, I think that's how you pronounce it. Maybe Kala, I don't think it's Kala. But it's the fifth book in the Dark Tower series by David, uh, by uh, Stephen King. And I have, I don't know if I'm going to read it, because I got it at a yard sale, and I need to read the first two or the first four first. Then I have Tale of the Body Thief by Anne Rice, which is the fourth book in the Vampire Chronicles. I found this at a thrift store hardcover for only four bucks. 